Hello everyone. In today's film I'm going to be creating a look using some plum tones and some purples. I want to use some of the most beautiful purples that I have within my kit and colours that inspire me. Now here upon the platform www.youtube.com I have produced and shared with you all looks that involve purple eyeshadow. Some of them have been very very bright, some of them have been slightly more muted, but today I want to create a look that's quite soft but has slightly more plum tones to it, but a slight bit of purple as an addition. Now I have already gone in and applied moisturiser as well as eyebrows. Today I used my consistent go-to moisturiser, which is Embryolis La Cream Concentrate. I have also gone in and drawn on eyebrows. Today I used some of Cryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D40, which is this beautiful army green grey colour. Stenciling and sketching out the shape with a MAC 263, I further went in and created depth and dimension to the eyebrow with individual strokes of ink. Lots powder eyeshadow in the shade 329 and I just darkened the eyebrow slightly and used it to set the D40 colour. Now a short while ago my eyes were very irritated and slightly inflamed as the skin around here was very pink and red and slightly raw. I'm not necessarily sure why but they were slightly resembling the anus of a flamingo. So I went in and applied some of Urban Decay's eyeshadow primer potion and applied a liberal thorough amount of it all over the eyelid and right up to the brow. For my base tone as well as my transition colour I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade Hawks. I'm just applying that all over the eye first of all. I absolutely love this colour Hawks because I mean it's very similar to Omega which of course I adore but it's less warm. It almost reminds me of the colour which I absolutely love and it isn't necessarily the colour of an actual eyeshadow. It's more a case of when you are taking off your makeup and you put on the pads with a little bit of makeup remover and then you take them off and there's almost this slightly smoky, taupey, cool toned effect across the eyes, even though they're simply dirty. It's a lovely colour that is left and I always think, why can I never find this in the form of an eyeshadow? But Hawks is the closest thing I've been able to find to that colour. It's one of these tones that are really easy to blend as well. And then I'm just taking a clean silver 2 to 8 brush and just softening and blurring all of those edges. Now I haven't applied any concealer or colour corrector or foundation of any kind, which serves to be very convenient when applying eyeshadow first, as we will not get any fall down. Then I'm taking a clean MAC 217 and just blurring all of those edges. Now I'm taking some of MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade Brulee and I'm going to use that just to soften the eye look. Now please do excuse this slightly offensive mark on my hand. I actually fell off the tallest tower in my castle. I fell about 200 feet to the ground and scuffed my hand. I did have a bandage on it but I thought it was best to allow it to air dry as it wasn't really healing as expediently as I would have preferred so I do apologise if it causes any form of offence but I'm sure you can overlook it and of course forgive me. And I'm just softening the edges of the Hawks eyeshadow with some of the brulee colour using a clean MAC 217. And I'm just going back in with a Zoba 228 brush and I'm just buffing over everything just to ensure seamlessness. I'm just going to take a little bit of the excess away with a little bit of Bioderma on a cotton pad. Now I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade Blackberry. And I'm just going to apply that more so at the outer corner and onto the upper lash line using a Zoba 227 brush. With the Blackberry now applied, I'm now going to go in with some of MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade Sketch. And I'm just going to smudge that, almost as if though I was lining the eye and drawing a cat eye. And I'm just smudging it on the upper lash line first of all and just lifting it out just ever so slightly with a Kidstars N33 Micro Pencil Brush. And the way that I'm doing it is keeping it within the triangle. And one way that I do this is by placing the brush against the eye like so and against the side of the nose so that it is within that triangle. I demonstrate this technique within many of my films where I place it like so and if you look at it straight ahead if you almost imagine whatever you were doing to stay inside that triangle this will give you the effect of a much more elongated look just by placing it the side of the nose and the side of the eye. You will actually feel the brush against this bone. But today I'm not actually elongating the eye by following my eye's natural shape. Now I'm sketching in a very diminutive wing. I don't want it to be too pronounced and I don't want it to be too visible. And I'm not actually following my waterline. So I usually follow the waterline shape as if it were to extend out and that lifts the eyes dramatically. But I'm almost creating the flick instead of it being on the edge of the eye 
almost after the eye. So it's a little further down and it will make the eyes look a little bit more dreamy. Just going to smoke the upper lash line. Now you can clearly see that that has given the eye substantial definition, yet it remains quite unpronounced. Now I'm not necessarily too concerned of the eyeliner for which that I just applied it looks a little bit messy because I'm going to be going over it with a purple tone in just a moment. Now I'm going to be going in with a purple eyeshadow. Now purple eyeshadow is one of those things that I think can be worn on absolutely everyone. I would say that the shade that you go for and the formulation is subjected to you, your eye colour, your eye shape, your age, all of those things. One must pick whatever one wants that's just most suiting to oneself and most enhancing of oneself. So you might be somebody that suits a very sheer purple over the eyelid or somebody that might suit a very opaque purple over the eyelid. I think that colours are a wonderful thing. Now I was very inspired to create a look today that used purple but used it not necessarily in the sense of hello I'm wearing purple eyeshadow, more as a purple accent to the eye look. I don't necessarily want it to be too dramatic but I still want it to be really beautiful and have a bit of purple colour in it. And today I'm going to be taking the Sleek Makeup Acid 570 Eyeshadow Palette. Now I've always loved this palette, there are really useful colours within it. Now I absolutely love these two purple tones here and the shade that I'm going to be using is this one right on the top. It just looks like a slightly fuchsia purple, slightly pinky purple, it's absolutely gorgeous but it has a slight reflex blue through it so it is absolutely stunning on the eyes. I haven't actually been able to find another colour like this. Another product that I have that is slightly similar but it's lighter, it's a pink, is by Furless Cosmetics. This is a loose eyeshadow pigment by Furless Cosmetics in the shade Obnoxious. I've always thought that Obnoxious was a rather unusual name for an eyeshadow, indeed so beautiful. And if I tilt that slightly you will be able to see that it is this beautiful loose pink shade. But then if I put a little bit of it on my finger you will see that there is a slight blue reflex to it. So these sorts of colours do tend to look very ultraviolet. They remain a violet but because they are predominantly purple or violet. The blue in them does not overwhelm the purple so it doesn't become a reflex blue or a reflex pink or a reflex purple. It just tends to look like a very blue toned purple. Now I shall be applying this absolutely beautiful purple eyeshadow from the Sleek Acid 570 palette on a Kit Stars S32 shader. I would describe this as a synthetic duplicate for the MAC 239. It's absolutely marvellous. And now I'm going to give it one little spritz of MAC Cosmetics Fix Plus. I'm always a little scared to use this actually as I'm deeply fearful of anything that sprays or squirts all over the place. And I'm just going to place this on the centre of the eyelid first of all. I'm just going to pull it out slightly and then buff it slightly along our upper lash line where we lined just a moment ago with the MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade Sketch. I just want to buff it into that. So with that absolutely beautiful violet tone now applied, I'm just going to go back in with some of our blackberry colour and just blur those edges, just really start to buff it in. With that violet tone now applied, it hasn't given me the exact level of iridescence that I would prefer and not getting my own way in life is not something that I have ever experienced. So I'm going to go in with some of that obnoxious colour just on the centre of the eyelid just to boost the sheen just ever so slightly. And I'm just using the same S32 brush just to apply that on top. And even though I've just crudely applied it, I haven't really organised its shape. Just looks absolutely beautiful just like that. I'm now going to go in and curl my eyelashes using some of Inglot's eyelash curlers. For mascara I'm going to be taking some of the Balm's What's Your Type in the shade Black. And I shall presume if you are a regular viewer of mine you are probably very used to me saying that. Now the eyes are temporarily complete. I will have to go back in and do a little bit of eyeshadow underneath the eye as well as touch up the mascara and apply false eyelashes but I shall be doing that near the end once I have applied and completed my foundation and concealer and powder. Now during the eyeshadow application there was a considerable amount of fall down. To clean that up I'm going to take some of Bioderma's makeup removing solution on a cotton pad. Just taking off all of that. Product. For foundation I'm going to be taking Huda Beauty's full filter foundation in the shade Milkshake and I'm applying that with a Real Techniques pointed foundation brush. And I actually want to keep my skin looking quite natural today so I'm going to shear this out 
And I just very carefully draw in around the eyebrows. Now part of the reason why I selected this foundation for use is because it doesn't really serve very well when brushed on. It either needs to be stippled on with a brush or buffed on or stippled on with something like a beauty blender. It does tend to look best when it has been stippled. Now I'm going to stipple all of that into place using a Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. Now I have evened out the foundation. With the foundation applied and correctly texturized, I'm now going to go in and apply some of MAC Cosmetics Full Coverage Foundation in the shade W10. And I will be applying it in the central areas of the face. Because this foundation is quite pink, this will actually serve as my color corrector for under eyes. And I'm applying it on a clean Charles Fox 81464 Zero 05 brush. Now I quite like the way my natural skin is looking. I'm only going to apply this in the central areas which require greater coverage as I do not want to mask the skin entirely. Even though I have gone over everything with Huda Beauty's full filter foundation in the shade Milkshake, I only applied a thin layer just to even out the complexion but you can still see my skin underneath it. And I'm going back in with our buffing brush for which that I used just a moment ago just to correct the foundation. And I'm just stippling that all over the concealer for which that I just applied. And to set all of that through, I'm going to be taking some of Inglot's Mattifying Loose Powder. This one is translucent. And just setting it underneath the eye first of all with an Inglot 6SS brush. And then setting the areas that require less precision with a Crown Brush S205 pointed blush brush. Now I'm going to go back in with my eyebrow brush from before and I'm just going to go in and correct the eyebrows as they will have been a little bit smudged and displaced from the application of the foundation and the concealer. With the eyebrows complete I'm now going to move on to contour and to contour today I'm going to be using this sleek makeup face contour kit in the shade light and to apply it I'm using a Zova 126 brush. For blush I'm going to be taking some of Illamasqua's powder blusher in the shade Sophie. And I'm just going to apply a very faint amount of this as it's very strong on a nice number six brush. Now I've applied a little bit more blush than I had originally planned to do so. So I'm just going to go back in with my powder brush from before and the remaining loose powder on the brush. I'm just going to stipple it over the blush of which that I applied and want to mute down. That technique just reduces the severity of the blusher. This can also work if your contour is too strong. To highlight, I'm going to be taking the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Platinum Ice Skin Frost Pro Palette. And I shall be using this shade right here, which is Pink Chill. And I'm going to apply it on an Inglot 4SS brush. And I shall employ a slight amount of it at the bridge of the nose, just to lighten that area. Tiny bit of it on the chin tiny bit of it across the forehead. Then I'm going to highlight my inner corners with a slight amount of it with a Kidstar's S30 small tapered brush. Now for lips, I was going to go for my usual nude shade, but today I've decided no. Do you know what? I'm going to go for something that's purple as well and something strong, something darker. For lips, I'm going to be applying Illamasqua's cream pigment in the shade Depravity, which is this absolutely beautiful, bright yet slightly muted purple shade. And I'm applying it with a MAC 231 brush. With that lipstick now applied to the lips, I'm now going to go in and apply an additional product to the lips just to build greater depth. And to do so, I'm going to take some of Illamasqua's cream pigment in the shade Mold. And I'm just applying it to the outer corners first of all. And I'm just dabbing onto the lip a tiny amount of MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Girl About Town. And before I complete the look, I'm now going to take a Kidstar's S33 Micro Pencil Brush with some of our Hawks colour from before. And I'm just smoking the lower lash line with that. Connecting what we've applied on the eyelid and the top part of the eye with the underneath. So that more or less completes the look. I went in and further added a set of false eyelashes. These ones are from an eBay retailer as I do tend to go for more affordable options for eyelashes as I discard them straight after use. The overall look has resulted in being quite vampy but I absolutely love it. I'm so glad I went for a purple lip, something a lot more full on. I think it just brings the look to life. I think a nude would have been wonderful but I think purple in this event has been a marvellous choice. And even though the eye look may appear very, very strong, it is actually unbelievably simple. And we only used one or two tones. And sometimes when you wear strong or heavy eyeshadow looks, you can actually soften the appearance of the eyeshadow by only applying the fullest strength of the eyeshadow on the upper eyelid. As you can see, I've left the underneath relatively bare, aside from a slight amount of that hoax colour, just to tie everything together nicely. And I certainly have had a lot of fun creating this film for you here today. And I hope that you'll find today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful or beneficial. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And of course, take care. Bye!